All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to GPPD Podcast. I'm your, ho- uh, your host today. I'm solo without my buddy. Uh, Nate had to take care of some personal stuff. Uh, we'll give him a hard time when he gets back. He told us why he had to leave, and we were all laughing about it uh, before we come on air. Um, but we wanted to sit down today and talk to Officer Ben. I appreciate you coming in, bro. Yep, thanks for having me. All right. Um, so uh, before we get started, just a couple things. Um, we always like to start, or I do, um, we try to talk about the need for, of course, police officers, but we also have a need for dispatchers. So anybody, um, all our listeners out there, uh, log on to grandprairiepolice.org. Same routine. You fill out the packet, get the information. Um, but what what I was told to pass along is you can do a sit-along, kind of like officers do ride-alongs. Well, they can do a sit-along. You come in, they'll sit you with the dispatcher so that you can see the vibe and, you know, the screens itself would run me out of there because there's no way I want to work behind three, four, five, you know, big screens or whatever. But, um, yeah, you can sit with them, see what they – how, how day-to-day operations are. Uh, let's see. Also, detention staff. If we have any listeners that are interested, um, detention staff, so intake, towers, all of that stuff, I believe you can uh, come in and see what it's like. They may do a walkthrough. I'll double-check on that. But um, same thing, get online, fill out the application uh, because we need good uh, detention staff members. So putting it out there. Um, but without further ado, Mr. Ben, appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Um, I guess what I kind of like to do is, you know, start from the beginning. Tell me about yourself, where you come from, and then ultimately how you ended up in GP. Okay. Um, as you said, my name is Ben. I kind of grew up in the North Fort Worth, Keller, Texas, you know, area. Okay. Yeah. Um, went to high school in the area. Yeah. Uh, right out of high school, joined the Army. Okay. Uh, did about five and a half years there, uh, one deployment. Uh, came back and got out of the Army on January 8th of 2017. Uh-huh. And January 9th of 2017, I started at my first police department. So no time in between at all. Okay. <laughs> so, you, look, you want those that go, man, I have to be doing something. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like you needed a break or are you that person that nope i just need to go from one to the other i need to stay busy well it kind of worked out um at the time the army was having a uh, a program where you could end your contract so i had a six-year contract you could end it early if you had a job lined up for after the fact so it just oh. kind of worked out and they kind of played the games of you can take terminal leave oh you can't take terminal leave you can it's like all right whatever whatever i got to do to get out earlier and just start my next career so yeah it just worked out okay so cool um so being a lateral like i'm a lateral so i guess we'll go in order what prompted you to say you know what gppd like how did you know it was here and not some other department well so i came from uh another uh, in-state mm-hmm. agency close by right. um, good department yeah. uh, you know obviously I left there so there were some things I didn't like about it and uh, it was nice being in an apartment around this area mm-hmm. uh, you kind of hear about which departments are ones to avoid and which ones are the the elite ones and, and we talk everybody everybody <laughs> talks in the area oh yeah <laughs> we talk. and so you know, I was good buddies with the canine officers at my old department and a lot of the agencies in the Metroplex trained together. And so just yeah. knew, you know, hearing everybody talk from everywhere about Grand Prairie's the best, Grand Prairie's the best. I'm like, all right, I'll try it out. You give so, it a shot. Yeah. Did you did you have to do like a ride along or did you just take their word for it? Like, hey, no. I did. I did a ride along. Uh, one of the guys came from my old department that's here too, um, Tanner Contreras. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, rode out with him kind of just to – you know, I had already decided that I'm putting in, I'm applying and everything, but it was just, let me just see what it's like. Yeah. So when I was transitioning over to GP, it was, of course, you're in that mindset of, oh, man, I don't want to start over, yeah. quote, unquote. You know, it's like, oh, man, hell, I got to go to nights and, you know, I don't want to do that. But so that w- that was running through my mind. How about you? Like, It was. So I did just under four years there okay and my my experience is a little bit different than others so I did about two and a half years uh-huh. and then I left 
um, and worked for the railroad in a non-police capacity. Yeah. Um, thought it was what was best for the family yeah. at the time. Uh, hated it. It was no way. awful. Bro, Money was great. They, they denied the hell out of me, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm bitter about the railroad. The, it was – the job itself wasn't bad. I yeah. enjoyed the job. It was challenging at times, and you know, yeah. other times you watch you know ten hours of YouTube and an eight hour shift, kind of slow paced. But other times it's I don't have a chance to get up and go take a, even a restroom break. It was just busy, busy, busy. Uh, so I enjoyed that aspect, but the company and the schedule, if yeah. you even call it that, it was it was horrible. Um, what kind of schedule do they? Well, it's, when we call you, you come in. Pretty much. So it would be every Friday you get your schedule for the next week. So you only have a week out, um, and yeah. they they run three eight hour shifts in a twenty four hour period. Um, so it would be, you know, first shift is day shift, mm-hmm. second is evening, third shift is night shift. Okay. And I mean, in one week you'd be working first, second, and third multiple times, and like you never have any schedule. Yeah. You're always scheduled two days off, but those two days aren't guaranteed. You could get called in on those days and. It yeah, was horrible. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so even even okay, I got my schedule for next week. I'll schedule time with the family, appointments, okay. different things around, and uh, and then you know ninety percent of the time that would change too. So it just it was not for me. You know, it, like I said, I thought at the time it was what was best for the family. Yeah. Pay was incredible. Yeah. Um, and you know, my wife and I we we prayed about it a lot and yeah. felt like that's where God was calling us and. It may have been. I still I'll, don't quite know what the reasoning was, and that'll be a question stuff. I'll have for him, you know, <laughs> whenever I meet him face to face. But uh, um, so then I left that and went back to the same department I left, okay, um, and uh, did about another year there, and that's whenever I came over to Kern Prairie. Okay, so I'm uh, man talking about curiosity. So when you go back to that department, do they look at you a little different? Do they say? Oh, I knew you'd come back because I heard that, you know, oh, Katie, you're leaving? Yeah, bro, I'm, I've got to go. You'll be back. You'll be back. You I had know. a few people say that. Um, most people were – there's one guy in particular, he's like, you'll be back. You'll be back. And so I was there for about two and a half years at the railroad before I finally was like, all right, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, and by that point, my T. coal license had expired, so I had oh, to yeah. had to challenge the T. coal exam and go through the whole process again. But the department was – uh, was pretty good about it. You know, I, I was, yeah. made a pretty decent name for myself there. So, there you go. Um, and left on good terms. I wasn't, you know, burning bridges as I was leaving. I'm smarter than that. Smart you know, man. Not a smart man, but I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not I, smart, I know some but things. I'm a smart man. You know, yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, there's a couple of guys, and that one guy in particular came back. He's like, I told you, you know. So when I left here, though, he's like, you won't be coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, so, he, look, is he still there? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But uh, to answer your original question, you know, for me, it wasn't so much starting over because I lost my seniority coming back when mm-hmm. I came back there. So I was like, I was on nights and I enjoy nights. Okay. Um, so it wasn't too much, too much of a big deal starting all over. Had I stayed there and, you know, probably, uh, you know, who, who knows where I would have been had I not left for the railroad. And, yeah. you know, it could be a different story, but yeah. it's all part of God's plan, you know. I was going to say, sometime, bro, you got to. You got to do something different to go where you need to go. It's mm-hmm. all good. You take a a, a a longer path to wherever, yep. but just for a reason. Um, okay, so now you mentioned this, and I know we're going out of order, but whatever. Um, so with your wife, and you're like, hey, okay, babe, I'm going to try the railroad. No, nah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back <laughs> over here. Uh, you know what? GPPD is where it's at. So how is she, you know, in this process? She she's awesome yeah. uh, i got a great wife yeah. you know um she uh she's always been like you know let's pray about it and yeah. if you feel like that's what's best for our family um because i'm the only one that works at home yeah. uh, we've been fortunate enough yeah. our entire marriage you know going on 11 years of marriage uh, yeah congrats, three kids bro. thank you yeah uh, hasn't always been easy but I, well it never is and if yeah. it was easy everybody would do it exactly yeah. yeah um so she's always through our entire marriage she's always been very supportive of you know what I want to do, what I feel like God is calling me to do, and yeah. and uh, and so you know, even whenever it wasn't easy, she's still she's very supportive. You know, I, and I, I tell people in this line of work, it's almost because marriage itself is going to be hard, mm-hmm. and it's going to try us, but then you start taking on things like uh, a, a crazy schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people the the amount of get-togethers, holidays. I mean, you name it. That list is long. It's like, uh, Katie, you got to miss this again. 
it, it takes a toll on oh, yeah. you. You know what I mean? And, and the marriage things, but yeah, kudos to her. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, she's great. Yeah, kudos to her. So, um, you do the the ride along. You choose GPPD. How was the actual academy? Because if you come over as a lateral, um, you do the abbreviated academy, mm -hmm. right? How was that for you? Um, it was. It wasn't bad. Uh, I expect yeah. was kind of anticipating it to be worse, um, but it, it wasn't too bad. Um, I, luckily, my class we had six of us in there: lateral, two out of state, and yeah. four in state, and really good group of guys. Yeah. Um, so that kind of helped it. You know, you don't have the one or two that are you know complete idiots that don't need to be here, but it was a good group of guys. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, it was it was pretty nice. It was nice to get onto like a, a pretty good schedule that I had, but yeah. and you know just. Putting, being humble about it and knowing, like, yeah, we're cops. We know how to be cops, but, yeah. you know, let's see how they do it here. Because, you know, the, people don't rave about this department for no reason. True. You know, so let's humble ourselves and, and just put aside what we know and just focus on what, what the Grand Prairie way is and, and learn that. So, Yeah. What are some of the things that stand out to you? And the reason I ask, I'll give this as an example. From the department that I came from, we didn't book you in, so to speak, like from the scene, like how we do it here. Mm -hmm. You could be out on call, you know, and you're in the car and you, all right, he's booked in. <laughs> At the first time I heard it, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. no, 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 don't we have to drive a long way and we have to sit there for three or four hours? No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> all right, so they're booked in. You just need to drop them off and I'll do the report uh, later. Matter of fact, I'm going to take the computer upstairs and go type the report. It blew my mind. Yeah. You know, how, well, I guess where you come from, how was it? And then, you know, how was the change? It was pretty similar in that aspect, honestly. Yeah. Um, okay. there's, there's a lot of similarities uh, from my old department to here, um, which is a good thing, yeah, you know. True. Uh, but I think most of it is more streamlined here yeah. um, and just kind of uh, overall easier um, yeah. in that aspect. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was as far as maybe that's where times are going for police departments to kind of go through that or not. I don't know, but um, that's just, that's it was similar, especially for that example you gave. Yeah. Um, it was the same as it is here or similar. But. See, I think departments should reach out to each other and bounce ideas mm -hmm. because that that alone would help so many other departments. Oh yeah, you know, just like no, 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 you can actually book them in. And start that paperwork process so that you're not tying up that oh, officer yeah. for X amount of hours. Yeah. We had a couple guys in my lateral class from Dallas. And then, mm -hmm. you know, take someone to do steric. And it's like, you're done for the night. That's your only arrest you're getting, your only report, you know. it's Yeah. It, I've heard people say that, uh, you know, coming from certain cities where it's like, no, you need to, I guess I would say, pick your poison, so to speak. Because if you do make that arrest, that is, it could be your whole shift. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And I was telling some of my buddies over here, bro, I've arrested three or four people in one shift. Oh, yeah. And Easily. That, yeah. And still had time. <laughs> there you go. And it was like, bro, I still got lunch. I worked out. You know, it was like, but over, you know, in certain areas. And I get it. But it was like, nope, you make that one arrest, you're there for about four hours. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about this department is they, you know, you, they make things streamlined. They make things to where it's not hindering the officers because you start hindering the officers. Like, well, they're not going to do their job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got a problem with, you know, cars being stolen, uh, left and right. And if you're making it to where you catch one person and now you're done, you're done for the night. Like, why am I going to go catch these people do victimizing our citizens in the city? So yeah. that's man, you, uh, you, you're absolutely right. It's, and I forget the name of it, but I think we have a committee that that's what they do. You know, they come up with, ways to make your job a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. And so kudos to those guys and girls who's doing that because we need that. And then once you see it implemented, you can tell that the officers that where the rubber meets the road, these officers are like very appreciative, mm -hmm. like the DWI process. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you were here when it was cumbersome, you know, even mm -hmm. then it was three, four hours. And like now they're like, nope, we've streamlined it. You know, you don't have to come log in and do FaceTime, you know, all the, it should take you two hours. And I'm yeah. like, holy crap, y'all are flying through this stuff. <laughs> so, but um, have you had any DWIs that? Yeah, I've had yeah. quite a few here. 
unfortunately. I mean, I've, I hired here in January yeah. of this year and <laughs> got out on my own in, I don't know, what, April, May, yeah. time frame, somewhere around there, and I've had quite a few. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Different, right. Yeah, it is. It's very streamlined. It, it makes it a lot easier. There you go. Um, which, back to our point we were just talking about, you know, mm-hmm. get one DWI, you're like, dang, I'm done for the night, but it doesn't have to be like that yeah you just you get finished with it quick and then hope you don't get stuck with another one there you go it's like we're hoping okay it's three o'clock i get off at six please yeah. lord i don't want that other yeah. one you know at four o'clock and you're like no nah. nah, I, I i get it um but but talking about like that the streamline thing it it's one of those where do you feel comfortable or would you say the gp culture here you can bring up an idea to your sergeant or whoever and go, hey, you may want to think about, and people actually listen. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And, you know, even when getting hired on, you know, everywhere you go, they're like, hey, we want to hear your ideas, but it doesn't seem genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, I think from the, you know, first day getting hired on, hearing that from every level up to the chief down to, you know, sergeants yeah. um, for patrol and everything, I think it's uh, it's felt genuine. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's, you know, how you present that. But Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. Um of course, okay, so when you start looking at other places or where you want to work, hey, uh, we're a great com- uh, a family. We're family-oriented, mm-hmm. right? You know, everybody preaches that. And where I came from, it was like, you know, how long you been on? Oh, 17 years. What are your off days? <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell? And then we come in, uh, when I was applying over here, you know, I remember Chief going, no, Katie, your family... It's not less important than this officer's family. So in patrol, everybody's gonna get a weekend off. And I'm like, no, you you know, <laughs> you have to work like uh, 15, 20 years to get a Saturday. Yeah. Nope. And so when I heard that in the way he explained it, I'm like, I'm I'm golden. Let's go. Mm-hmm. You know, I was ready to sign. Um but how did how did that relate to, to you and your family? Like you know the schedule wise yeah uh i think it works better um from you know i was at the at the department mm-hmm. their schedule was was like a you have a long week and a short week similar to here but you do okay. your long week you work monday tuesday you have wednesday thursday off and then you have work friday saturday sunday so that's a long week yeah but the next week you only work wednesday thursday so it's kind of nice and you uh-huh. have every other weekend off so yeah, you can yeah. kind of plan uh-huh. and stuff but um, and then I went to the railroad, and that's just, you know, schedule is even the right term to use for that, you know. Um, and then, it you know, it'd be 20-plus years before you get uh, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday off of at course. best, you know. Yeah. Um, so then went back to the, the schedule at the, my old department. And then coming here, it's easier, you know. Uh, I've got every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off, guaranteed, yeah. you know, and then yeah. every other Saturday. It's like, man, all right, that's that's easy to find a plan time around you know with family life and everything and so my yeah. wife loves it yeah she, you know it's our kids two of our kids are in school our next one will start kindergarten next year yeah um so you know days i work don't see them at all really but mm-hmm. you know days off then i'm there pick them up from school or you know they're home and uh or i'm home when they get home from school and it's, yeah. it's great yeah take advantage of it um i know with that that schedule is just one of those when when I when I was in patrol, you can actually plan vacations, but only use like one or two vacation days. Mm-hmm. It, and it was weird because I remember we were doing something, and I'm telling my wife, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to burn twelve hours, and she was like, uh, is that it? And I was like, yeah, and we're going out of town like five days. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, wait. Nah, something's wrong. And you have to read, you, you check it again. And it's like, no, it's only one work day. I was yeah. like, man, I love it. It's It makes it so much easier for that. Yeah. You know, just, okay, I take one day off and I've got <laughs> five days off. All right, cool. We can work around that and, you know, save some vacation time for a big trip or something. But yeah. 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 Oh, man, that's funny. Um, so let's go back to the, the family aspect. And I think I, everybody that I talk to, I like asking this because – my dad, uh, uh, how how you like doing that police stuff? I'm like, pops, I've been doing it for almost 15 years, man. Like, I'm getting ready to slow down and retire. Well, you know, I just want to know how you like it. Mm-hmm. Do you have anybody in your family that's like, oh, you know, I'm a question that or 
Um, no, most of my family is pretty supportive. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, yeah, everyone in my family is pretty supportive of it. Uh, yeah. The only one in my family that was in police, uh, my dad's dad was a police officer yeah. way back in the day, but okay. other than that, nobody else. So, yeah, uh, I'm pretty fortunate that everyone's pretty supportive of it. So, yeah, it works out good. Yeah, it, it was funny because, like, when I was in college, and I don't know, maybe it's overprotective parents, but my dad asked me the same question. Uh, you you like playing football out there? Yeah, that is fun. It's fun. <laughs> well, the boys just hit real hard, you know, and I'm the smallest guy on the field most of the time. And I was like, I'm okay. Yeah, it hurts sometimes. I'm all right. Yeah. And so it, it's funny how that just transcended, uh, transcended right into, you know what, you, you're a police officer. You like that? Yes, Pops, I like it. Um, but he was he was military. Um, so, no, you said a uh, grandfather? Yeah, just my grandfather was a police officer. Where, so. where about, was it local? It was, no, they were in California at the time. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember exactly where in California, but okay. they eventually got smart and moved here to Texas. So, uh, was yeah. before my time even. So. Look, I was going to say, don't even get me started on that. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we love our Cal, uh, Cali laterals, especially mm -hmm. driving up those home prices. Shout out oh, to yeah. those guys. Yeah. So, um, have you thought about like, cause you're, I know you're lateral. So have you thought about like where the mental health fits for like you and then your family as it, you know, as you deal with police stuff? Yeah. Um, you know, I've, you know, going through doing some stuff in the army and then mm -hmm. just being, you know, being a cop for, you know, not terribly too not long time yeah. you know, going on five years or so now. Yeah. Um, seen some stuff and, and even just in my f short time, five years with my two and a half year gap. So I've been yeah. in pl involved in policing for the past seven years or so. Yeah. Um, it's, it's seen like, it's pretty interesting to see how like the mental health stigma has started to go away, which I think is super important. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with some stuff, you know, in my time and, uh, sometimes not the best way of dealing with things and, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's, yeah. Uh, recognizing that okay, I need to take a step back and, and yeah. focus on my own mental health and uh, having a, a good support system at home is the, the 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 biggest factor in being able to deal with those things. Yeah, it, bro. I tell you, so like I'm one of those. You know, if you want to put a face on it, uh, put me out there. But I think there's just some professions that you need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you go, nope, Katie, my life is great. If you're in law enforcement, you need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Because we don't always get time to process a lot. Oh, yeah. Military, for sure. Law enforcement, <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, uh, we were talking to, to a guest a couple shows back, but Forged in Valor. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, shout out to Dr. Kim. Uh, shoot, even here, it's like our mental health. You know, when you you could go downstairs and talk to Emily, Courtney, yeah, and and I think more and more departments are coming on board. Um, we need that. We see a lot. You got to learn how to process it. Oh yeah, and um, I think I think my lateral class was the first one that they tried. I don't know if they're still doing it or they're still kind of working out the kinks, but mm -hmm. uh, that they it, they worked it into our schedule that there's one day where we have uh, like a. a like a, a classroom portion on it and then yeah. we go and have a, a little like session. starter session with them and yeah. it's worked into our our academy schedule and uh i thought that was awesome mm -hmm. um, so I, I hope that they're still doing that i'm not sure if they are but i know that our class i'm pretty sure was the first one that they were starting to like hey let's see how this would work into our schedule and everything and yeah uh, i hope that they're doing it because it's something that even if you don't think about it at the time at least getting to Okay, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've you know put a face to the name. So if I do need to go back, you know later on when something's really affecting me, yeah, it's not completely going in the dark. You're at least recognizing. Okay, I've been here. I've seen the building at least. I've seen faces. Yeah. No, bro, you're you're absolutely right. I think here here's my point. When we get to the academy, physical or, or PT as we call it is a high priority. Mm -hmm. So then you start doing it every day. Yeah. And then they go, no, 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 penal code is high priority. So then you open up that book and you start going over it every day. Whatever, I'm glad that we're getting away from that negative stigma. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, no, man, if you see your, your brother, your sister is struggling with whatever, say something. Yeah. 
You know, it's kind of like these damn billboards. You, you see something, say something. Yeah. You know, we shouldn't be any different. You know, and it's like if you had an issue, I want you to be like, KD, hey, can I holler at you for a second? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, I, when I'm sitting in there and I'm getting ready to go in for my session, I may see somebody I know come out. You know, I don't care. I, you know, what's up, bro? I speak to you. <laughs> you yeah. Know, dab you up, and I, then it's my turn. Um, but you have to learn how to offload some of this stuff. Um, and shout out to the training academy for doing that because that's something new. I don't know. I only talked to a few agencies that are that are close, but I don't know who else is doing that. But that's that's mm-hmm. good, and we need to continue that. Oh yeah. Yeah, we need to continue that. And like you said, then it just opens up the door so that if you want to go later. Bam! I know I can call this person, email this person, set up an appointment, mm-hmm. and go. Because I've seen it go where you know you want to bottle everything in, oh, yeah. and we don't deal with it the right way. Yeah, like you alluded to earlier. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. So now that I, I don't know. So what would you say? Where I come from, you're a rookie until you hit about five years. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think? I I agree with that. I think once you hit that five to seven year mark is. Yeah. It's kind of where, like, okay, you've seen most things you'll know how to handle, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree with that. So yeah. I've had a little bit of a gap in mine, and, <laughs> I mean, um, I definitely don't know it all, and I don't think I'll ever know it all. I hope I, if I ever get to the point where I think I know it all, that's yeah. the time to retire. Yeah. Oh, um, oh my God. The, the ceiling just opened up. Yeah. You know, thank God. That is the right mentality to have, trust me. Um. So what is the – like, what is one thing you want to do while you're here? Like, some people say, oh, I want a K-9 or SWAT or... Yeah. What, what is it that um, you want to get into? Short term, I want to do SWAT and FTO, FTO. Um, which I I think is a, a pretty good possibility. Um, so you want somebody so. over there doing the driving, and you're just going to hold that handle? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I want that, but <laughs> I, I think FTO is a, it's, it's something I've always kind of wanted to do um, after, obviously, I want, you know several years uh, yeah. in policing in general and then a couple years here at least um but i think fto like you're shaping how the department mm-hmm. how the department goes you know got all these little officer bins running around and mm-hmm. if you know if i'm doing things the right way then that's good as opposed to you know you got somebody else who just uh you know it's it's probably the most impact on the department Bingo. ftos mm-hmm. uh, and i'd like to to do my part to yeah. give back to the department in that aspect yeah, it, I always say like if you want to make a difference, then be the be the change you want to see. Mm-hmm. So, you know, not not gonna pat myself on the back, but it was like even when I was on the bike unit, so I rode bicycles here. I'm like, you know what? I remember telling Sarge, we're not coming back to their training because I don't like the way they do it. Yeah. Instead of fussing about it, no, Katie, go get your license to instruct, and I did so that I can run things the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, you know what? Mm, I remember this. And I told my partner, I said, hey, this is how we're going to do our training classes. And, bro, we set it up to where we were training. Everybody was coming to GP to get trained. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're definitely definitely right. You train them like you want to see the department ran. And so my advice to rookies, I always tell them, man, just, you know, make sure you voice your opinion. You know, you can do it respectfully. Sure. You know, talk to your, your FTO and go, hey, why are we doing this and ask questions and learn but yeah that's pretty cool so the SWAT thing mm-hmm. yeah you like uh, working out and <laughs> uh, looking good and doing all this stuff but uh, why, why SWAT I did it at my old department yeah. um, I love the I mean obviously you know you got the typical answers of you know the camaraderie and the yeah. team you know and everything but um, I mean the training alone, you know, you get to train and shoot probably more often than, you know, the average patrol or average officer, even upstairs and being a detective. Yeah. Um, and so I think that makes you overall, you know, all around a better officer. You know, you're different training with different scenarios of different um, type situations. Yeah. Your, uh, your officer safety, your, you know, your primary focus on, you know, a lot of the training. And so I think it can it can add to helping uh, you kind of be a better over overall all around officer, which then you can take that to patrol and then use that the experience and the the training and you know just other situations that aren't quite SWAT situations yet, but they're still um, we still got to do something about it, you know. Yeah. So I was I was gonna say now, you know, because for the listeners, 
we don't have a full time SWAT team Correct. per se, but we have SWAT members. Mm -hmm. So when you're on call, what happens is <laughs> you get these crazy calls, and it's like, wait a minute, I'm looking around. I see your tabs. You're a SWAT member. Uh, sir, he's in the house. How do you think you – like, they're going to look at mm -hmm. you for those answers. Yeah. You know, and it's it's instant in some cases. It's kind of like, okay, what should we do? Because I don't – I'm not a SWAT guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we was joking earlier. It's like, you don't want to see me go into a <laughs> button hook into a room. It just don't look good. So, yeah, we would lean to, to the whole Ben. I'll be calling you. You know, bro, you need to tell me where to go and what to do. Um, all right, so we'll change gears a little bit. Um, I'm a country boy. I like to, to relax, um, cooking, horses, the whole night, like, mm -hmm. like country. What are y'all doing? You, the wifey, the kiddos, what are y'all doing to relax? When you get away from here? Um, well, we got a nine-year-old, a six-year-old, and a four-year-old, so oh. there ain't too much relaxing going yeah, on in our house say, right yo, now. Yeah, your house is just... Yeah. Choo, 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 choo. My oldest is finally getting to where he's he's loving sports, so he's yeah. loves watching football and you know go Cowboys. Yeah, you know, this, uh, this is our year, uh, man. This is our year. Okay. Every year is our year for <laughs> as long as I've been alive. So, uh, but you know, we just really just doing whatever, hanging out at the house. You mm -hmm. know, um, I like to do like DIY stuff around the house whenever we got yeah. the time or um, or barbecuing and stuff. So. Yeah. Smoking some meats and everything. So, uh, true country. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. What you? No, come on. Let's talk about it. All right. What um, you want to talk about? So, there is grilling, smoking. What else? Uh, when it comes to the to the grill, I think that's about. Yeah, grilling. I think is everything can direct, kind of fall into one of those. Two yeah, categories. direct fire versus smoke. Uh -huh. So, what is your favorite thing to grill or smoke? Brisket. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I said I don't have the time. It's yeah, it's tough. I don't. That, There's. I've recently started doing some uh, some bacon burn-ins. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot shorter amount of time, but man, they're good. Yeah, I'm trying to think now. You know, uh, we with all this high cholesterol <laughs> going on, uh, I'll indulge it one time. When next time you cook them, let me know. I I'll, I'll love to taste it. All right. I am a rib guy. I love some ribs. Um, do you take the membrane off the back? I don't. I usually score it, so huh. don't. So it's kind of an in between. Yeah. Um, instead of leaving it on all the way or yeah. taking it all the way off, you just take a knife and kind of score it. Yeah. Um, that way, it's not like completely. Yeah. You know, it's an in between there. So. Hmm. Okay. Because you you meet people on the they they're on one end of the the, the aisle yeah. or the other. You know, it's kind of like no, hey, take it all the way off, and then you got old school. No, if you smoke it just right and long enough, it's going. What does it say? It's going to disintegrate anyway. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I bite it and you got to pull away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not down with that. How long do you cook them for? Like your ribs? So you heard the three, two, one method. Uh, uh, like three hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped, and then another hour unwrapped. So I do kind of a variation of that. Okay. Um, do like uh, four hours unwrapped, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, go more for a look and, and temperature. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then like, half an hour wrapped and then I'll unwrap it and put whatever yeah. uh, whatever uh, barbecue sauce I'm put on there and then yeah. until it gets tacky and then pull it off and good to go. Oh, okay. So I'm almost opposite. I go three hours in fall. Okay. And then I'll do an hour unwrap and then I'm going to baste it with whatever sauce for about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. We're going to uh, create, I'm writing it down, barbecue cook-off. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. We, we're going to have one. It, I'm telling it. you, I want to pull like a whole bunch of smokers out in the front of the PSB. We're going to have teams of two and, you know, and we'll let the Chiefs judge. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Are uh, you an offset man? Or are you oh, pellet? all day. Oh, okay. All day. Ain't one of them. The yeah. easy bake ovens? Yeah, no. Okay. And, and look, we, I guess we have to set rules, right? What is it? A Traeger? Yeah. You can't even pull that into the parking lot because you're not going to cheat. <laughs> you know, that is cheating. You, you Oh, I can set it with my phone. Look, yep. it's a smart yeah. Traeger. No, See, dumb I, Traeger. I first started getting into barbecue and I got a Traeger. And then, <sighs> hang on, hang on. Okay, All okay. Right. <laughs> and as I'm doing it, you know, making some pretty decent barbecue. And I'm just like, man, like, I'm not a real man. <laughs> I, I love it. So I love it. I, I had love to, it. I had to go get an offset, and that's I still have the trigger, but yeah. I hardly ever use it now. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be times when that's good, mm -hmm. you know, especially like you got little ones running around. Like, yeah. okay, I'm trying to barbecue, but I need to be in the house watching mm -hmm. kids. 
I got it. I'm talking about people sitting out on the back porch, and you you got time to cook, but you just lazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I can set it with my phone, and uh, let's watch the game. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that is cheating all yep. day long. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. do you you cooked uh, uh, beef ribs yet, or just pork ribs? So pork, and uh, I want to say I tried beef, and it was years ago. Um, but I totally messed them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, with weight, the size, everything needs to go. You need to smoke them a little longer, maybe, yeah. you know, and get the fire up. Um, but it's so important. Do you have a quality grill? When I asked you that, I went and bought, hell, I think mine was six ninety nine at mm-hmm. Academy. But come to find out, it's like if you don't have the thick wheels, yeah. and the, it, you, you're wasting your money. Yeah. I was like, I'm doing my research, and I'm like, uh, babe, I want me a Santa Maria grill. Have you heard of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one where you can load. Oh, yeah. I'm like, babe, the steaks are going to be off the chain, but it has to come. Oh, okay, how much is that? $1,800. Yeah. <laughs> I send my wife ones that I want all the time. She, nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hell so. yeah, let's get that. But then I start looking online, bro, if you get a good smoker with that thick metal mm-hmm. and then he can he took a card or something like this and he was like let me show you you can't get inside once you close the lid yeah it he actually goes, seals properly and traps all the smoke in there he goes that's what you want now if you don't want to get it here he goes wherever you get it that's what you want mm-hmm. and i didn't know that i've been going to academy for years you know yeah. I'm like babe mm-hmm, got me a good smoker yeah everybody come over i'm cooking yeah and you can see all the, all the smoke leaving everywhere yeah so, oh, you know yeah um but yeah I, I won't do the Traeger. I, I won't break down, get that. But I do want the Santa Maria. Do, have you cooked on an egg or? No, I've never egg? used any of those. I've heard they're they're okay, but I've never. They I've said never the tried ceramic part is just so thick that it holds the heat very well. That's what okay. I heard. Um, hmm. So I don't know, but yeah, um, I, I'm telling you, I'm writing that down. We're gonna have a, a barbecue cook off. And I Let's want it, it in front of the PSB. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to shut the block down and just feed everybody for free. And I better win. <laughs> um, all right, so let me ask you this. Um, I know you say you're a homebody, but do you have hobbies besides, like, working out? Mm, you like to be around the house, DIY. What, what was the last project that you did at the house? Um, well, not to brag of myself a little bit, oh, but hey, the wife went out of town uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, uh, she's gone for the whole week, so I took the week off and just dealing with the kids at home and everything. But yeah, uh, built our built like did like a little accent wall in our bedroom and then mm-hmm. built us a new bed frame uh, in like two days and yeah, turned out pretty good. But yeah, she uh, surprised her when she got home, so it was pretty nice. That's our first every other bed frame we've had. Uh, you know, we got married really young. I'm only yeah. 30. Yeah. We've been married 11 years. So, you know, we, uh, we got married awesome. really young. Yeah. And uh, awesome. so everything we've owned for a long time now has been <laughs> hand me down stuff. So we just <laughs> gradually been either buying something new ourselves or I'll build it. And so, yeah. This was our first, first full, our own bed frame that I made. So. Yeah. I, I don't even know where to start. Like to, Bed frame, two by sixes, two by eights. I, I, I don't uh, know. There's lots of different ones. Yeah, there's some two by sixes, some. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I'm a cop, so I ain't going and buying good, crazy, good quality wood. You know, <laughs> using <laughs> construction lumber. You know, and just staining it and making it decent. But yeah. um, I ain't got the, the time or money to go get. See, you know, white oak or anything like that. But, I'm all about it until I get to the corners. Yeah. I don't know how to angle the saw and like you know y'all you're gifted if you can do that <laughs> whoever those handy me I can't do it it's like no if you cut it this way it's not gonna fit and it's gonna be a gap and I'm like put some putty on it and we'll sand <laughs> over it and yeah I, I would love to do that yeah. I need a, a barn like mm-hmm. I guess storage yeah we call it storage shed but you know barn do you build those? I haven't. I'm sure I can figure it out. <laughs> he's gonna be. He's gonna have a second job before there we, we go. leave here. Yeah. 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 Pergola at KD's house. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh. Fishing, hunting, not yet. Um. Sometimes. I mean, I have. Uh. You know, a little bit throughout my life, but nothing. Yeah. Nothing too regularly, unfortunately. But yeah. I enjoy it. It's just. Yeah. I don't know. I need to get into it more, but. Yeah. Is that now you have a son? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we got two boys and a girl. Two boys. Okay, so is the girl the middle child? She's the baby. 
Oh, she's man. my little princess. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's going to keep them boys in, in check watch. Oh, yeah. Tea. Um, I don't know, because most dads, oh, man, I, I, I'm going to take him hunting. Because my son now, he wants to go, but he was like, there's a bear in every set of bushes. And <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, I, no, we're going to go. We're going to go camping. Yeah. Yeah, but aren't the bears in the bushes? I said, well, daddy's going to bring his gun. What am I going to have? You know, so I'm like, uh, what a gun. Kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, whistle, you, you tell me that it's over there and I handle it. Um, do you see yourself doing anything like that with the boys? Um, yeah, we've gone. We've done some in the past. We've gone camping. Yeah. Um, my wife's grandparents used to. They now sold the land, but they had some land down uh, in Streetman, which is near Corsicana. So okay, about an hour and a half or so south yeah. of here. Um, and we just go. You know, they've got a little. They had a house there, but we're just like, hey, they got a little pond. Let's just go pitch a tent next yeah. to the pond. And and then uh, oh, you we ain't done it in a while. That was probably a couple of years ago. And yeah. middle of the night, you hear the coyotes yelling and howling and everything. So my boys are all scared and yeah. everything. So we'll, yeah. we'll let them get a little bit older and then yeah. and then go. But that, that's the man. I'm telling you, I I would love to do it, but I know me and my kids. I mean, they would be all up under me. Mm -hmm. just, Dad, did you hear that? Not like, go to sleep. It's okay. No, I can't. Did you hear that? Where's the gun? Where's Mama? What is she doing? Where's the flashlight? You know, it'd be yeah. one of those things. Are we there yet? Yeah. Type deals. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all right. So I know. See, I told you we get all around. The, we'll talk about everything. Um, if you, when it comes to laterals, so I always tell guys um, or girls, whenever you're thinking about a department, you want to do the ride along. Okay. Go and figure it out because although we're all here and we're going, oh yeah, kudos to GB, GP. Somebody else may think another city, the way they operate, is mm -hmm. a good fit for them. Um, do the ride along. What advice would you give to somebody that's thinking about, you know, transitioning over to us? It, like you said, do the ride along. Um, I mean, really, you just got to focus at what what you want to do as a police officer. You know, if you're one that just wants to just answer calls and, you know, not do too much else, then, you know, it ain't the department for you. If you're somebody who is a go-getter and you want to go out and you want to, um, you know, chase bad guys and take people to jail and have fun doing good police work, yeah. this is clearly the department for you. But do what's best for your family. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not all about how much money you get made, you yeah. get paid, but obviously, you know, we, we make a good amount here um, compared to a lot of agencies. But, yes, sir. But um, that's not what it's all about. You know, I left policing and went and made twice as much at the railroad and hated it and took a oh. – took a seventy thousand dollar pay cut to go back to policing because i just it, the yeah. money wasn't worth it you yeah. know it, and some people it may be you know that that's not this isn't the career for you if it's all about the money it's all about the money yeah you know and, and I, I and i'm gonna echo that um if you're chasing the dollars yeah like no it's just not gonna be a good fit yeah but if you are that officer that loves doing police work mm -hmm. and being proactive yeah, you probably want to look at Grand Prairie. Yeah. Um, I know the only regret that I have coming over here is that I didn't come sooner mm -hmm. because somebody had approached me and go, hey, KD, uh, you may want to come on because it came over before I did. And I was like, oh, no, nah, man, you know, I'm good. I'm yeah. good because I think I was still, no, I was in a different unit by then, but I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Okay, but w what's it like over there? You know, so I started asking those leading questions. Sure. And next thing you know, it was, no, 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 you can do a bunch of traffic stops because I enjoy doing traffic stops. I said, okay, what is the schedule like? Because right now I'm off on <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesdays. You know, I, he was like, huh, man, I'm off every other weekend. And I, bro, you're lying. Okay, stop lying. Don't, yeah. don't try to sell me something. I said, just be honest. He goes, I'm honest. Uh, like, I was off, you know, and we explained the schedule. Um, and like I said, so to the listeners, in patrol, you can be off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or you can be off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and every other Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, that's unheard of. Where we come from, you got to do 17, 20 years. Yeah, you got to put your time in and earn it. Yeah. So, I'm, man, uh, do the ride along. Ask questions. As far as the money, yeah, we're going to be one of the highest paid. Yeah. But there are some just good things and, and perks that come along. Now we're going to sell GP, by the way. Um, but there's some things that come along with it. If you live in the city, take home. Mm -hmm. Huge. Oh, yeah. I've heard I was, oh, man, I've sold my other truck because I don't need it. What? Yeah. You got to take home. Uh, and, I mean, there are rules with everything. Sure. Um, 
but uh, I don't know if y'all live in the city, but um, you know the, the take home alone is I haven't heard of too many departments that do that. Oh, that's or a huge patrol. Yeah, that's a huge uh, plus. I mean, yeah. we don't live in the city, so I don't get to partake in that benefit. But yeah, um, the conversation has been made between my wife and I several times. Like, you know, I wouldn't <laughs> mind moving at least closer. You know, yeah. but yeah. in the city, we get to take home and yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. Um, so. Hell, what else? I, like, I just, I can go down the list. Uh, there are many departments here you can transfer. I think you have to do two years, and then you can go to whatever unit you mm-hmm. want to. You know, you can apply. Um, the pay is good. Uh, I think one other city <laughs> saw that we were number one for a short time, and then they yeah. tried to jump over us. But um, we have the support of, you know, city council, mm-hmm. command staff. That is. It's the, the little things that really make a department you can Mm -hmm. get paid tons of money but if you can't go out and do your job and have people supporting you there you go outside of the department within the city yeah it's pointless yeah yeah so again um those are some of the perks man listen do the ride along get online fill out that information um any closing words by you mr ben anything i don't care if it deals with police work home life give us some closing remarks Oh man! All right, mm-hmm. put me on the spot. Put here. you on the spot. Let's go um, <laughs> and do your research. You know, yeah. and it, it's do what's best for your family. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that's coming to Grand Prairie or if you're, you know, not in police work and you're looking into getting police, getting into police work, do what's best for your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because a career, as fun as it may be, as yeah. long as it may be, it ain't gonna stick around as long as your family is. Yeah, true. Um, and if you don't prioritize what's best for your family. You prioritize other things. You're gonna you're gonna lose the family. You yeah. Know? You're gonna you know the statistics of officers being divorced and stuff. And that's that's because it's a one. It's a hard job. But yeah. you start prioritizing it over your family, then yeah, it's stressful. You know, it's it puts a strain on the on the marriage. Yeah. No. Trust me. We could talk a whole another hour about that stuff. Um, I would say don't don't lose sight. Don't don't lose focus. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your, your your family, your kids, your wife, whoever, your spouse, they've been supporting you to get you here. Well, then you need to show them, especially on your off time. You know, like you said, you took off a week. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, do that because we can get in the habit of, oh, I got to work. Oh, you know what, man, we make good money. But if I go and work all these other extra jobs, yeah. there you go. And next thing you know, you're chasing the dollar mm-hmm. and your spouse is sitting there like, hey, look at me. Um, I need some time. So, you know, really focus on that. Um, because that is, man, those stats are real. Mm-hmm. You know, divorce, suicide, alcoholism, you name it. It's it's huh, yeah. staggering. Um, okay, so I appreciate you, man, sitting down. Thanks I know it's a little me. different. Uh, we'll, we'll catch Nate on the next one. But um, I appreciate you being coming out and chatting. And uh, we will talk to y'all next time. All right, and we're out. Thanks.